Hey Jim. Well, howdy, Hourglass. It's too cold. But of course. You gotta love the service in this place. Mighty fast. What am I telling you? Best drink in town. <coughs> you know, uh, I'm really glad that you tried to put your life of crime behind you and gave back Mr. Pop's years. He's really quite great. I hope you get to meet him someday. Mm -hmm. I bet you like him. You know, remember last time we were in the bar with, uh, with the uh, uh, with the stone, like you were, uh, the first time we met, you showed me a stone in a bar, uh, and then, well, you punched me when we had our first fight, but, you know, we've come a long way. Uh, uh, uh Jim? Yeah. Well, there's this beautiful necklace on the floor here. Well, I'm not sure, but I'm sure whoever dropped it will come back momentarily. Oh, I sure do hope so. Anyway, uh, as I was saying, it's really beautiful to think about like how far we've come and all the, the progression we've done and how, how much we've ch uh, how much we changed. Uh, My name's John Magnum Hourglass, and I'm a detective on the hunt. For months now, I've done nothing but relentlessly track down the only lawbreaker that's ever kept me on my toes, the man who managed to evade my every move time and time again, my greatest rival, my arch nemesis, the notorious knows it neighbor. neighbor will be brought to justice because if the job ain't solved 
my name isn't John Magnum Hourglass. Hey, what's taking so long back there? Like I said, it's just the wind. Good. You know, man, for a moment there, I was really worried that you next. Your offer to me is really what I would like. Five million. Five million, if you agree to my offer, that's really your offer to me. May I inspect it first? Of course. You have a deal. Steve Roberts, it's time to say goodbye to your prime giving days. Why, Detective Spade, if you aren't the cleverest, sneakiest sleuth I've ever done nefarious business with. <laughs> if I got a penny for every time somebody said that, I'd be richer than I already am. So what happened next? Next part? I keep flipping the Jesus out of Look, 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 Newfound presence here in Proud Pass. I'll begin that case as soon as possible. But for now, buy my time to book, will ya? Spade. Detective Spade. That's a name I've yet to hear for a long time. In fact, it's a name I never hope to hear again. This old adversary of mine from my early detective days has apparently become quite the popular figure around these parts. While I never believed our paths would cross again, if this fella's to be going after my nosy neighbor, then I'll best go confront him about it. Busy! Detective, uh, I've come to offer something to you. Uh, who are you? Renowned and respected Detective Hourglass. Never heard of you in my life. Security, take this man away. Time to go, chump. He doesn't want you here. Hey, Spader Boy, come on now, come on now. I just want to see you. I just want to. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. 
Well, how are there, old friend? Hourglass. Tisk tisk. Long time no see. Still solving cow tipping cases, I assume. Listen, Plato, I didn't want to come here, but I'm afraid I need your help. Oh, really? I'm afraid that doesn't come as a surprise. It's about the, uh, Nosian neighbor. You have a leave? No, Bucko, I am the lead. What could that mean? Well, Detective, unbeknownst to you, I've been tracking this fellow you're after for quite some time now. In fact, we're rivals of sorts. Uh, I know how he, you know, fights, commits crimes, does it, the evil stuff, the like. Uh, I know how to catch him. Well, I appreciate the offer. But I don't really need your help. I don't know, Detective. You might be wrong. Tricky customer of that knows your neighbor. Find him on many occasions. He's not your usual bad egg. And did you ever beat him? Yeah, no. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, of course I did. I, Plenty of time, so, how come he's still running up? Beats me. Well, it has been a slow week in the life of me, a icon and mastermind. But you got past my gods, so I suppose we're just. One case you can call him as a sidekick. Sidekick? <laughs> a sidekick? Yes, a sidekick. That'll spice up the story, wouldn't it? I'm no lanky sidekick. Do you want to put your nemesis behind bars or not? Let's sell for partners, huh? Partners? You know, equals. Equals. We'll see about that. So you in? To fight evil, get paid, and bring shame to your public image while doing it? Always. Right. Well, let's get to it then. Me and Spady Boy got straight to work on our detective. Not after long, we pinpointed the general area the nosy neighbor was most likely hiding out of. Well, I concur with that. Just that way, the nosy
Yep. I guess we're gonna have to keep looking. Yep. No, Trick is right there. No, he isn't. It's a trap. You're being serious right now. We've gone all this way. He's right there, and you, you, you're being so paranoid. I, I, we can just go grab him. He's trying to trick us. Don't he, you see? There's no trip wire. There's no, no ring a ding ding. He's right there. He's sleeping. He's snoring. It's a trap. It's not a trap. It is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. That is no trap, and if you're going to try to tell me it is one more time, I swear, detective, law, badge, or no badge, you're going to be not, you're going to, I can't speak, you're going to be the, not only boy is going to get beat up tonight here, son. You see you here? Nobody escaped my face. Hello, Hourglass. G. Willikers. This is your new cellmate, Biting Bonnie. She's in here because of numerous attempts of biting people. She's being succeeded multiple times. <laughs> right, so, you're putting me, a world-class thief, inside of a prison cell with a psychopathic lunatic. <laughs> what if she, you know, bites me? Mm-hmm. Should be fine if you stand on your side of the cell. Anyway, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go and grab a cup of coffee and a donut. See ya. Oh wait, you have a visitor. Hourglass. Jesus, here comes the hero speech, right? What do you want? You come to spit on my grave? I didn't do this to you. Oh, so your heroic friend did. He didn't either. Who? Hourglass. Who? You did. You knew as soon as you joined the crime business you'd end up losing in the end. 
you'd end up starving in some Husko. I gave you a chance, an opportunity to throw it all away. But no, you'd rather go running around, stealing everything you can lay your hands on like some street rat. You've stolen so much, so much. And what have you gave back? Nothing. Goodbye. Sheesh, he did some inquirer flashing time after that one. Too bad he won't get any. <laughs> Biden Bonnie because you're obsessed with biting people? That's correct. But you don't want to bite me, right? Yes. Probably. No. Maybe not. What would you gain? The sight of sudden shock on your face and pain. And then fear. <laughs> Look, Bonnie, if we're gonna make it in here, I think we're gonna have to have some trust between each other. Alright. Friends? Friends? Okay, friends. We don't bite friends. No, we don't. Now. Then I had to flee across the country all while he was hot on my trail, and eventually he caught up to me, and now I'm here. Sounds like quite the criminal journey, though I think mine with the biting people is a little more evil, but I agree. Now let's see. Nosy neighbor and biting lady, you're on my jailbreak list. Gosh darn, that's not All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen. I assume you're delighted but confused on why I freed you from jail. Don't worry, I'll explain. But before I get to my evil plans, why don't you get to know each other?
trusty right hand, Brian and Brian. Lastly, there's me, Violet. Go. Any questions? Good morning. Um, it's 4 p.m. Do you uh, happen to go by the name of Abigail Dice? Yes. Who are you again? And why do you have a gun? <laughs> oh, there we go. <gasps> oh my gosh, a gun! Now seriously though, do you need something? Don't you try to play games with me. I'm really not playing games. I have no idea what you want or what is Violet. going on. My doll, Violet. She broke uh, an arch nemesis of mine out of jail. Left me a note that she sent me to use. Now I have no idea how you're wrapped up in all this exactly, but you are a piece of the puzzle, and I will find out. Did you say Violet? Yeah. And that she sent you to me? I used to belong to an esteemed family known as the Dices. My parents were beloved within the Proud Pass community, and they did everything to ensure the town we lived in was as happy and beautiful as anybody could ask for. But then, out of the blue, Violet struck. She terrorized us, robbed us, sent us threats, destroyed my parents' reputation, and eventually killed them too. All for her own amusement. The only thing she left behind was me. Now, I roam these streets aimlessly. Because of Violet, I am a lost soul. There's still one thing I don't understand. You said Violet left you clues. This one actually left me a clue. But why? Violet's not like other criminals. All she cares about is the thrill of the chase. She leaves clues at every single one of her crime sites. The thing is, these clues are so hard to decode that even though they could lead to her downfall, no one's ever come close to cracking them. But by no one, you don't mean Detective Hourglass, because I'm gonna go catch that mad woman, and I'd like you to join me. You want my help? Why? Well, I mean, obviously Violet led me to you, so you're tangled up in all this somehow. But also, I like your story, and I'm offering you a chance at some good old revenge. What do you say? Revenge, you say? Uh, yeah. Come on, it. I can't hold my arm up like this all day. <laughs> all right, I'm in. Is this here your estate? Oh, what's left of it? This used to be the grandest manor on Proud Pass. Now it's just an old haunted house that kids tell stories about.
hell are you doing here? What the hell are you doing here? After my tense reunion with Spade, he told us Violet had two led into this mansion with an encoded note. By combining our two clues together, it led us to a third, hidden within the estate. I hoped this would be the last of Violet's clues, but unfortunately it seemed her games were far from over. Meanwhile, Violet and her gang were starting all sorts of trouble wherever they saw fit. Not a single one of these twisted crime committees seemed to have any soul and a sense of good. Not one of them had any compassion or care for their fellow man. All they wanted to do, it seemed, was the work of evil. The clue from the mansion led us to another clue, which led us to another clue, and then another. I imagine you get the idea. Like a puppeteer and his puppets, Violet had me, Abigail, and Spade running around crowd dash like prairie dogs to a gun. But if we got the chance to find her evil lair after all this, and playing along with her game would prove to be worth it. And don't call her boss lady. Nobody is my boss. Well, you are doing her bidding right now. I just want to get this stupid thing done and be on my way. You told me you like doing bad guy stuff. On my own accord. And besides, my crimes are art. They are seamless and orchestrated. This is just pure evil. I don't want to be associated with these scumbags that murder for fun. <laughs> And I thought you were a real bad guy this whole time. See you later, loser. Wait, wait, wait. Can I tell you a secret? Yeah, what? I don't like those buzzards either. Yeah. No, gee, this seems like a bad idea. We don't even know what's in there. No, we don't. But it must be pretty valuable. I mean, why else would Violet keep it by her side on? Let me just grab it and sell it after we get out of here. The money we'll make will help us disappear. Yeah, but it could be like a toxic gas or a killer robot or something like that. You are being paranoid. I know what I'm doing. Seriously, did you ever believe-
Hey, ba 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 boss. How's it? Hanging. Impossible. Nifty! <clears throat> my old goon! Oh my god, it is so good to see you. We need your help. Let me out. We, we need your... You left me. What? You le 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 left me to die. Must. Nifty, please. Time to. Must. Ah! 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 Get in! It took a long, long time, but we had done it. We had found Violet's evil lair. Camped hundreds of yards away, we planned to strike at midnight. But for now, it was a waiting game. There's a... There's a... There's gonna go do some scouting around here somewhere. Uh. No. You might have found your phone. Really? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. You've been cracking these riddles and finding these clues just as good as me and Spady Boy. And that's saying something. Detective Abigail. I don't know. Look, when we beat these bad guys, you'll be just as famous as him or me. You'll basically be a detective already. I don't really care much about the fame. Well, that's a good trait. I can't say it's something you share with Speedy, though. You know, it's real funny. When I caught the nosy neighbor, I thought to myself, man, this must be the most uninteresting case Spade's ever been in. I mean, it was so fast. There was no, no, you know, meat to it. It wouldn't attract any attention. And then not only a week later, we're in the biggest case of our lives. detective thing fall through the roof let me be clear here i'm not taking you up on that job offer i could still use an evil mastermind like you in my evil operation the answer is no i called because i want to ask you a question are you in a room with a semi-functioning cyborg right now how did you know that I was just researching a disappearance connected to a criminal known as the Nosy Neighbor. Ever heard of him? Sure. 
Aren't you supposed to be trying to catch him? I'll get to that. The nosy neighbor's one and only henchman, who went by the name of Mifty, was supposedly attacked and killed by two carnivorous cats last summer. The thing is, the body was never found, nor were the cats. That got me interested, so I dug deeper. These animals were sold to the nosy neighbor by a local black market fellow, a person who claims he worked for you. I'm guessing that when you ordered him to retrieve your carnivorous cats after hearing how they were abandoned, he took Mifty with him. And the only reasonable explanation would be because he was not dead yet. Black market figure was trying to save the man's life. Bravo, detective. Bra I'm not done. Why would Madame Violet's heartless mob save a man's life? Not for morality's sake. You needed a test subject. He was the perfect candidate. You see, back when we were throwing Hans, I discovered your evil lair, and I took something with me that I have never disclosed to the public. Violet's top secret confidential cyborg world-ending blueprints. By the looks of them, you've been putting a lot of effort into this project. And for years now, too. I had no idea something this random would be your life goal, but... Whatever. What do you want? Are you threatening me? No, I'm simply trying to strike a deal. A deal? Through my fame and many favours for the law, I've got connections. Lots of connections. I sent your blueprints to a friend of mine who happens to be the government's weapon manufacturing manager. He liked it. He was impressed it was done by a first-time engineer. But he still found there were some fatal flaws to the design. Floss? Tell me, tell me, how do I fix it? I will. In fact, I can get those guys to build it for you. Build it for free. But I'm going to need something in return. What is it? You mentioned my case with the nosy neighbor. The truth is, I did catch him. But not the way I would have wanted. You see, all my cases have become worldwide phenomenons thrilling mysteries, exciting adventures, twists and turns that keep you hooked. And this latest case with the nosy neighbor had the potential to be the greatest yet. I had a special guest detective, Hourglass, working as my sidekick. Everybody loves a crossover story. What happened? We were too good. We caught him in little over a day. There was no story, no adventure. We just found him, slapped him around, threw him in jail. Hell, if I tried to write a story out of that, it couldn't be more than four pages long. It would be boring. I can't release that. I've become more than just an enforcer of the law. I'm a hero, a celebrity, a provider for entertainment. And I need to provide that entertainment whatever the cost. So if I can't find a good story anymore... I'll have to make one. I see. I'm assuming this is where I come in. All you have to do is break him out of jail. I don't care why. Just come up with a reason. <sighs> make some noise. Burn some buildings. Kill a couple of people. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow down. Is that your plan? Yeah. What's the problem with it? If you want to make a big story, one that will cement your place as the greatest detective of all time, I say go all out. All out? If you have the opportunity to choose what happens, why not get creative? Why stop at the nosy neighbor when I can break out all of the most infamous bad guys from your books? I'll get them all to join me. I'll create the greatest bad guy gang the world has ever known.
Together, we can come up with all sorts of crazy puzzles and riddles for you to solve. I can even throw in a couple red herrings, maybe some loose ends from my previous crimes. I've been meaning to deal with them anyway. It will be crazy and complicated, insane, and really, really fun. And once you throw those bad guys back in jail, you'll be the most famous hero on Earth. What about our guys? The nosy neighbors involved. He won't be too far behind. I still want the story to have a crossover selling point. But if I work with him, I'll have to share the fame with him. And I can't handle sharing this level of fame with that scruffy, cross-eyed, stumbling, shallow detective. I have to be credited for all the success. You will. All you have to do is get Hourglass back into the story and kill him before he steals the spotlight from you. Kill him? Okay. How? Is everything ready on your end? You betcha. Although it took a while, they really don't make bad guys like they used to. So they know we're coming and they're ready for us. Yep. All right. My guys are camped nearby. Great. Just remember, when we break in, I'll split up from our glass and the girl and go to the right, not left, the right. It's crucial you position nobody to the right. Everyone needs to. Be brought down to the left so they can jump your good guy friends and kill them in a heartbeat. We've run over this. It's just everything needs to go to plan. This whole ambush of yours is a huge risk on my part. Your part? What about my part? Are you able to pull off the end of this plan? Yes, I'm sure. We have no time Spade. for this. Side. What? They're trying to put an end to this. Twilight, come to the stop your hourglass? No. Nosy neighbor? No. No, get back here. Stop. This is crazy, huh? I mean, your good guys turned bad and our bad guys turned worse. Are you? All right, are you two guys gonna stop staring? Like, like the stupid stare, it's getting on my nerves. I don't think he's ready for that yet. Shut up. Hey. <laughs> Me and Bonnie can take those schmucks down all by ourselves. We don't need your help. So what are you gonna do after that, huh? Run away again? Maybe I should just forget it and jail you first. <laughs> Maybe I should just forget it and kill you first. Hey, 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 remember what we talked about? Chill the heck out, guys. Sorry. What about you, Abigail? You know, for a moment there, I really thought I could avenge my father. I thought I could avenge him and take back my family legacy. But now, now there's no hope for that. No, there'll be no legend for me at all, or legacy for that matter. Wow, okay. But we're not a very cheery group of people. Ragtags, misfits. But if we have one thing left, it's each other. Each other? Each other. There's no each other. There's never was and there never will be. 
There has to be. He's right. Spades got the heart of the people and connections within the authorities. He'll use both against us. Through the knowledge of the common man, we're as much of a fugitive as you are. The past is the past. Yesterday we might have been thieves or detectives, but today we need to come into something bigger, something the world actually needs. You really think it's possible? Can I ask you a question? You chose to turn against Violet. Why? I don't know. Maybe it was... Maybe I'm just as bad as her. Well... We're going to be heroes. We might as well plan our hero plan in somewhere that isn't a cold and miserable abandoned barn. Don't worry. I know a guy. His barn was full proof. Full proof. It obviously wasn't because they found you. Those mongrels. I'm ruined. I've turned the law again, Sourglass. But if they catch him, they'll stop believing his story. It makes perfect sense. So you want to try to kill him again? Yes, I want to kill him again, but I'll never be able to find him. Why do you need to find him? Why don't you just lead him to us? Us? How would we lead him to us? Well, I may or may not have a plan B. A solid one, too. But you might have to pay me in advance. Do you see? They're hiding from me. They're actually doing it. They're so mad. I can't believe this is happening. This is crazy. Crazy? No, it makes perfect sense. I wish we could have done this in the first place. I mean, a cyborg murder machine! We didn't use it for our evil plan! For the last time. It, it's not an evil plan. I'm not evil. Okay. Regardless... Not sure the public will get behind this idea. It's so random. Well, do you have a better idea? Yeah. Then make the call already. Are you sure nothing can destroy this thing? Nothing will be able to be my robo machine. Hey Jim. Yes. I'm going to need you to put something in the papers for me. Robo Mifty. Could that be the same Mifty that stole my ears? Seems fishy. Coming! Wow, Jiminy Cricket! Howdy there, Flap. What are you doing here? Hourglass! And a mischievous nosy neighbor. What are you doing here? It's a bit of a long story. Mind if we come in? Y'all better read this.
They're revealing Robo Misty to the public? Sounds right. So we gotta destroy him before he's booted up. But how are we going to destroy him? Even if he is powered off? I know just the thing. This little sucker should do the trick. What is it? A computer sure virus. From back in the day, I was a pro hacker. I took down five classified Pentagon databases in a single afternoon. A real hoot. A pro hacker? Yes, that was before I was a literature scholar, but after I pitched for the national baseball team of Finland. You sure that'll work? I'm bloody positive. Well, perhaps the Robo Mifty's firewalls on the high end of things being designed by the space government and all. So it may take some time to get through those technological hurdles. For how long? <laughs> Who's to say, no longer than snatching up a quarter pound trophy trout out of Mel's Creek at high noon. Uh... Perfect. That'll be as long as we need. It'll be a piece of pie. Well, not really. I'm sure that place will be crawling with those baddies. You'll need some weapons of mine. Take them out. What kind of weapons? Well, take what you like. Well, actually, don't take it now. We won't be living till morning, so call dibs. Get hydrated. Then you can come down and eat some of my delicious gruel. Been cooking for three or four days, that gruel. Then you can get hydrated. And after that, you better brush those teeth of yours. All of them. Every single yellow one of them. And then get some sleep. Tomorrow's a big day. I've destroyed the filmmaker. As the light was slowly slipping from the sky, my mind raced about the details of the coming day. By these waters, this time tomorrow, Spade will be hosting a live reveal of the Robo Mifty. But it will all be a front. Once we arrive, they'll call off the party and set Mifty on us, as well as all of his evil friends. Outgunned and outmatched, the fight will be almost impossible to win. But giving it a chance is the last thing we can do now. I suppose it would always come to this. Every great case seems to have an explosive ending.
Suddenly, from the vastness of space, a block convenience meteor hurling towards the Earth at 415 kilowatts a second has come to put an end to its flight scene because of filming complications.
guess we both came prepared with metal plates on those shirts in case we got shot. I suppose so. Well, it seems we also planted tasers on each other in advance of the spy in case we did betray each other. Maybe we were equals after all, Hourglass. never running out of plan B's. Screw it! My name is John Magnum Hourglass, but by now I assume you know that already.